Hi everyone. I've mentioned a few times that income inequality can be a major barrier to development for developing countries. I've also mentioned that the, the given ways that we measure development doesn't actually include income inequality in that measure. So the HDI, for example, single indicators like GDP per capita does not give us a representation of income inequality in the economy. So it's important, therefore, if we're measuring the progress of an economy, to use our indicators like the HDI, but to also use measurements of income inequality to give us a true measure of progress. So how do we measure income inequality in economics? Well, we use two things. We use the Lorenz curve to give us a visual interpretation of income inequality, and we use the Gini coefficient to give us a mathematical interpretation. Here's how the Lorenz curve works. Let's start by looking at the axis. When we draw a Lorenz curve, our axis needs to be labelled like this. On the y-axis, we have the cumulative percent of income in an economy. On the x-axis, we have the cumulative percent of the population in an economy. The word cumulative is important. All it means is up to and including. So if we're looking at the 60th percent of income, let's say, within that, we're also considering the previous 59% worth of income in the economy. So up to and including. Right? It's very important. The diagonal line represents perfect equality. It represents a direct relation, perfectly direct relationship between population and the amount of income. So basically 10% of the population will earn 10% of the income according to this line. 50% of the population will earn 50% of the income, etc. So this line represents a direct relationship between population and income. Let's say on the left we're looking at Australia, on the right we're looking at Vietnam. Let's draw a Lorenz curve, shall we, for Australia. Australia's Lorenz curve may look something like this. Because the Lorenz curve is not the line of perfect equality, it implies that there is some inequality here. And if we look carefully, we can see that, let's say, the last 10% of the population are earning substantially more of the income than the first 10% of the population. So we can see here that any time the Lorenz curve, in black here, Any time the Lorenz curve is away from the line of perfect equality, there is some income inequality out there. And basically, the further away the line is, the more income inequality there is. So in Australia, the Lorenz curve is not that far away from the line of perfect equality. There is some inequality in Australia, but not a huge amount. Whereas in Vietnam, there is a much greater amount of inequality, which means its Lorenz curve may look something like this. That could be the Lorenz curve of Vietnam. You can see it's much further away from the line of perfect equality than Australia's Lorenz curve is. And if you look at this Lorenz curve very closely, the first, let's say, 20% of the population are earning a very small percent of the income, maybe 5% of the income. Whereas the last 20% of the population are earning potentially 50% of the income. So, again, the further away the line is from the line of perfect equality, the more the income inequality there is. And that can be visually seen on, this, on these two diagrams. Going one stage further, the Gini coefficient can actually give us a measure of how much inequality there is. The Gini coefficient takes what the Lorenz curve is saying, what the Lorenz curve is visually saying, and provides a number to that. How does it do it? Well, there is a formula. So first of all, let's stick some letters on our Lorenz curve diagrams. The Gini coefficient puts a value on these areas and then calculates a figure based on this equation. So it measures the value or the area inside the Lorenz curve but outside the line of perfect equality and then it divides that by the total area underneath the line of perfect equality. And then the figures we can get will either be what well, will be between naught and one. Naught implies perfect equality, where one represents perfect inequality. And again, this makes complete sense. This makes complete sense because if the figure is zero, what does it imply? It implies there is no section A. There is only a section B. There is only an area outside the Lorenz curve, which is um, section B. Section A doesn't exist. There is no area inside the Lorenz curve uh, at all, because the Lorenz curve is the line of perfect equality, which means section A is zero. 
So 0 divided by a number is going to be 0, which implies that we are at the line of perfect equality. Whereas if the figure is 1, what does it imply? It implies that uh, section A is all that exists. There is no section B. Because if there is perfect inequality, then the Lorentz curve essentially is the x-axis and it's the line going directly above there. So it's essentially this, these two lines together. It's the Lorentz curve, there is perfect inequality. Which means that the last person in the economy is earning all of the income in the economy. Perfect inequality. And if that's the case, then there is only section A that exists, there is no section B. So it's going to be the same number over the same number, which gives us a figure of 1. But very simply, the way to interpret the Gini coefficient, the closer the figure is towards 0, the more equal income distribution is. The closer the figure is towards 1, the more unequal income distribution is. And that's an important way to uh, manipulate these figures and to interpret these figures. In an exam, you might be asked to show an economy moving from a very unequal distribution of income to a more equal distribution of income. You can do that on one Lorentz scale. So let's take Vietnam. Let's say in a case study that was being said, and for an exam question you have to show that, on one diagram you would say, right, as the case study says, income distribution of Vietnam is becoming more equal. This can be shown on my Lorentz curve, where initially income distribution was quite unequal, and the new Lorentz curve is showing a more equal distribution of income. Okay? So learn the, the Lorentz curve as a visual interpretation, learn the Gini coefficient as a mathematical understanding of what the Lorentz curve is saying, and you have your perfect measures of income inequality. I hope this video helps. Keep this in mind. See you all next time.